So, uh, <coughs> I hope you guys are doing well. So last night I had a dream. I told my toxic mother not to touch me ever again in public. And public shame humiliated her and she walked away from me. And it was liberating. And my sister was in awe of how well received I was without even trying. And my sister was being ignored despite all the effort she put into desperately seeking outside validation. And basically to sum this up, in the dream, I realized my mother allowed her extreme envy and jealousy to turn into lust for me. Now, you know, before when I was wearing rose colored glasses, I was like, no, <laughs> you know, these, these scenarios would have came to my mind. I would have been like, no, my mom is hard on me and you know, she's extremely critical of me, but no, not my mom. Only to discover it doesn't matter somebody's title or label. They could be your boss and extreme envy and jealousy turns into lust. This is why you'll have people who are extremely envious and jealous of you who will try to get close to you. This doesn't matter what your sex is. If you masculine and you got a whole bunch of dudes, you know, I'm trying to get close to you to see how your operation work, they willing to do some stuff on the down low with you, <laughs> okay? Same goes for feminists. Yesterday, um, I kept hearing this song, um, and it goes like this. Uh, well, basically, the feminine, the toxic feminine, who was, uh, I, f I feel she was pregnant by the toxic masculine. She was saying, my man keep hanging out with his friends every night. <laughs> So 2022 is the year where you're going to have a whole lot of people, um, quote unquote, realizing they're part of the LGBTQ community, okay? Because <laughs> toxic feminists are going to not actually see that they need to do some inner work and they're going to be thinking, you know, that only if a woman can do it for me. So uh, divine feminists, be mindful that it's not the masculines that you have to be concerned about that's going to be hella aggressive. I mean, you know, still have your precautions with them, but um, to uh, toxic feminists are highly more dangerous than toxic masculines. It's really harder to catch a female predator than it is to catch a, it's easy as hell to catch a masculine predator because that toxic aggressive energy and you know that drive for the ego to be fed is what gets them caught. Now, the toxic feminine, their ego is fed in a very different way. It's by, you know, um, planting long-term seeds to basically be a pain in the ass, okay? Now, if you are blessed to be dealing with, you know, a, a toxic masculine who has both these traits, well, and you got away from them, that means you smart as hell. Can keep up the good luck. I mean, keep up the good work. <laughs> but um, basically, 2022, extreme envy and jealousy, if the individuals are not able to get to you, they're going to be lusting hell like hella high for you. Um, and one would say, you know, with the, with the dream I had, with what it revealed to me, it doesn't matter the relationship you have with the person. This could be your aunt, this could be your cousin, this could be the best friend you know for five years. This is a type of shit where they'll be like, oh, you know, the, the toxic feminine or toxic masculine will have been planting seeds and you like, bruh, you don't like, I'm the only trustworthy person you got. And right when you get by yourself, you know, this person would have actively been isolating you, making you feel like you got to be defensive around everybody and shit like that. And literally right when you get by yourself, this person will create 
beforehand a scenario where you would feel you have to be defensive and you really need to feel safe. And instead of just telling you the truth that they set it, set up some things and orchestrated some things in the background just so they could get you alone, this is when they would seduce you. So this extreme envy and jealousy not only will turn into lust, but, but possessiveness, okay? The type of possessiveness where they're trying to um, destroy you at the same time keep you, okay? So <laughs> 2022 is definitely revealing a lot of darkness, you know, in people, um, <laughs> so uh, basically to sum this up, the goal of a person who is extremely envious and jealous of you, that's lusting for you is basically to possess you, destroy you and to trap you. Okay. And you have to be able to recognize this because if you do, you know, want a person of the opposite sex who's high vibrational, there is somebody out here for you like that, okay? Um, if you do want somebody who is the same sex who's high vibrational, there is somebody out here for you like that. But the same is still the, the same thing. All high vibrational people are learning to basically, you know, develop that discernment that was basically a lot of narcissists in their childhood when above and beyond to disconnect them from it. So a lot of um, empathic individuals are building up their uh, stamina to trust their intuition, to trust their discernment, rebuilding that endurance back up because it was torn down for so long for a lot of us. And also, you know, there's going to be a lot of subliminal messages being put out in the media as well for relationships to form. And it's not being targeted at the average day, you know, okio dope type individual. It's being targeted at empaths because they need empath sexual energy just to keep going. You're going to notice this is going to be really rampant. Um, in summertime, okay? So if you want to uh, get into the uh, investment time, this is a good time to invest into what? The dating market right now, all right? And take your money out right when summer starts, okay? Mm-hmm. Because in the summertime, basically, because the twin flame um, scam is you know, fanning out, it's starting, you ain't gonna really hear too much about twin flame shit anymore. Because a lot of people are starting to realize that if they keep putting out twin flame information, they gonna have to suffer the consequences of that bullshit, okay? Basically, there's subliminals being put out so empaths can attract envious, jealous, lustful, possessive people who want to destroy them and trap them, much worse. So basically, we're in the age of Aquarius. This is a very dark time. Let's keep it 100. You have to really fight for your happiness and your peace and your joy and your light. And you have to do use a medium of creativity that will help you be able to uh, share your darkness because there is so much darkness around you, possibly you've experienced, or that is trying to target you and you have to expose it just so you can have peace. And a lot of people are going to try to fear tactic you so that you can keep your throat shock or blocked. No, the way to freedom is talking about it. Because if I'm telling you that my extremely envious, jealous mother has lust for me and she's possessive and she wants to destroy me and trap me, you're starting to see it's not, well, this is what a mom does and this is what a mom doesn't do. No. It doesn't matter a fucking label. A person is a fucking person. They're going to do what the fuck they going to do. Okay? So in the age of Aquarius, this is where emotional slaughter 
is at its highest peak. And what is going to emotionally slaughter a lot of people is if you are in denial about certain aspects of certain people that spirit is clearly showing you that you need to pay attention to. Because in my dream, my mother slyly went above and beyond to touch me. And before, you know, that fear of, oh my gosh, she's going to hurt me, would overcome me and I would, you know, passively, aggressively, you know, you know, be like, don't touch me. But this time I was like, yo, get your nasty ass hands off of me. See, <laughs> and then, you know what? I'm putting some things together. I have attracted a whole bunch of people like this. So I've attracted a whole bunch of feminines, toxic feminines, who would act as my friend. At the same time, they would, you know, try to paint this picture to the LGBT community that we are in a uh, relationship. All the while, they are afraid of the fact to admit that they like the same sex. So they go hard as hell to uh, get me into a threesome with a nasty ass nigga. And when I say nigga, I'm not talking about just black men. The individual I'm talking about, she tried to get me to have a threesome with her and this white nigga, okay? And, you know, she tried to dress it up as, oh, you know, it's just dinner. Do you want to have dinner with the neighbor? Peep game, honey. And this, this, during this time, I was making a vision board or something like that. I was, I was making something artistic. I believe, uh, in fact, I... I might just start making a vision board today, actually. Um, I have E6000 glue and newspapers and scissors and a poster. Okay, but yeah, I was making a vision board. You know, I was really into my thing. And she didn't like it that I was coming so goal-oriented and focused. This is where the possessiveness kicked in. And at first, you know, because I was, it was easy to shame and guilt me. But my ancestors was like, no, nah, Spain. You got to really stick to your guts right now, okay? Keep making this vision board. And they, you know, at the time, I wasn't used to being direct. You know, I was still, you know, trying to kiss ass due to feeling like it was the only way to get by and survival. And she came back. Um, I basically decided to just sit there and change my mind on her ass, you know? She came to check in on me, basically, to see what I was doing so she could see what she was going to be doing next. And she was like, so are you, um, we going to be leaving soon? I was like, oh, no, I'm cool. I'm, I'm actually going to just stay here and do this. She was pissed, okay? This whole left the house, honey. Let me see what happens to her. Because I know I went out. Yo, I'm starting to get memories. I went out that night to get some fresh air. And she literally locked me out of the house, y'all. I slept in my car. And then she acted like she didn't know that um, I had been ringing the doorbell. But basically, she stayed up that whole night trying to see if I would sit there at the doorbell. And then, when I didn't come back after a certain time, she was basically energetically stalking me to see where I was and who I was with because she was jealous if I was with, you know, you know, um, sharing my sexual energy with a masculine energy. And shortly after, this bitch kicked me and my daughter out. So this is, you see how this uh, toxic uh, sociopathic feminine energy can get? <laughs> Y'all, be mindful of these so-called same-sex friends that's trying to come in. They basically want to destroy your foundation, so you're relying on them. And so you will regret ever, quote-unquote, betraying them. Oh, yeah. By the way, she was abused by that man. That man sexually harassed her. And uh, she came back and took that shit out on me. <laughs> Huge regret now, don't you think? <laughs>